Well, maybe we should wait for a clear long stretch. And we've got that, but it says go straight for 20 miles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, priority number one is not crashing. Yeah. <clears throat> In, uh, from my perspective. Yeah. <laughs> quite up quite, uh, there with mine. <laughs> yeah? Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast. Drupal technology, community, and business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast. Drupal technology, community, and business. module for that there of course there is <clears throat> so interestingly i am sitting in a moving motor vehicle being uh, piloted by george boopier and we just spent the weekend at drupal camp brighton i'm guessing that the sound quality here is not going to be the best but on the other hand i have a captive interview victim <clears throat> subject for <laughs> for the time and um, so, George, you have a company called Blue Bag. Blue Bag, that's right. And um, describe what you do. Well, we're a Drupal solution provider. We, we, we're, a, we're an online digital solution provider, but we, and we choose Drupal as the framework of choice to do that. So um, all, all the work that we do is done in Drupal these days. Okay. The fact we've been doing that for the last five years. We've been in existence for 15 years. So clearly... Given that Drupal didn't exist uh, in any sort of fo fully formed way 15 years the ago, year after we, we existed, right? So, so how did your company come together, and what were you doing in the in 15 years ago? Well, 15 years ago, I, I came together with Guy Schneerson, who I run the company with, and we were working on Microsoft sort of Microsoft platforms, really, with SQL Server, but writing uh, web applications in Ball and Delphi in Object Pascal. Wow. So it's writing ISAPI-based applications against SQL Server. And we were doing that for companies like the Natural History Museum. Mm -hmm. And we wrote a system for them that they used for 12 years, I think, really. You know? And that was based around sort of templating and all sorts of things which we're familiar with in Drupal. But obviously we built from scratch, from the ground up, in Delphi. Wow. Um, and then we... And, and until when did you have to maintain that? Well, we, we, we wrote it in about uh, yeah, 15 years ago. And it worked on their servers on without any real need for maintenance for about 12 years. In fact, the only time we did any maintenance in that 12 years is when they trashed their server and they needed us to reinstall it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they, it's it's hard to say that about most applications now. It is, it is. And they, um, with the templating system that we, that we developed for them, they were able to restyle it themselves and everything without any input from us. So, so those, those sorts of things which, you know, we take for granted like... with, with Drupal are key, key, and that's what attracts this Drupal, that makes, you know, sort of their strengths. <laughs> So I can see how, um, if you'd been thinking that way 15 years ago, that um, finding Drupal and seeing that it matched your thinking in many ways, that must have been an appealing proposition. It was very, very appealing, yeah. And but the, big, the, big, the big difference for us was open source, really, because we were working in Microsoft technologies, proprietary technologies, and you know, we were giving our clients our customers were you know, having massive hardware and license refreshes every year with no change of functionality. So, um, Oh, you're paying for the privilege of using... <laughs> right, or, I mean, in the discovery phase, uh, you have to pay just to turn it on and see if you could make a solution, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We were managing hardware stacks, which would cost tens of thousands of pounds a year just to, just to, just to have a license in a drawer somewhere without any change. You know? Gosh. So tell us um, how you discovered Drupal. Well, we, we, we decided to, to go to open source, and um, so we looked around and we evaluated quite a wide range of different frameworks, um, dabbled with WordPress, and we, we wrote some automated sites with, with WordPress, but we just found it so not, not really you know, as flexible for our needs, and we came across Drupal actually through the work. We did a lot of work in the environmental sector, and it was well used in the environmental sector in customers that we already provided solutions for. So we actually thought we ought to take a look at it so that we were up with the sort of technologies that they use. And um, we took a look at it, looked at some great podcasts and, and screencasts of how to do things with it. And we were sold then and there and we completely changed the whole business from proprietary to open source. So that thing, that, so that, thing that, that I always tell people of um, 
happy customers are going to create more Drupal users on their own is 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 really true. It is true. Yeah. I mean, you know, people are keen to spread the the cost savings and the ease of use that they got through Drupal. And, you know, I think as a you know, I remember being someone that didn't know anything about Drupal, probably pronouncing it Drupal. <laughs> As one does, as, as one, one does. does in the early days, <laughs> and um, installing it on Windows machines and going through the headache of trying to get oh, Drush working on Windows, and, especially five years ago. Yeah, yeah. and um, and so that was a revelation. Yeah, we we threw away all our Windows machines and bought Macs and got, oh, got Drupal uh, open gateway drug. stacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, never use Windows servers again. Ah, oh, so so do you have a first? Do you have a, a memory of the first time you touched Drupal, the first time you looked at it, your first experience with it? Um, I think the, me my, the, the memory wasn't probably... I mean, in, in one ways it was... Because we dabbled with WordPress, the, you know, the first thing was that it wasn't, wasn't the prettiest. But, you know, from our background, we, the thing that really sh um, stood out to us was the, its capabilities as a framework, you know, and the, the prettiness would come later. You know, and that's our, our responsibility to make it pretty. Whereas... Um, other other CMSs that we looked at, you know, the, the the ceiling was so much lower, and it was obvious out of the box to us, you know, as solution providers, it was obvious that we weren't going to be able to extend those in a meaningful way like we would be able to Drupal. Ah. And we started doing things in Drupal, which, um, you know, I mean, coming from a, um, a Delphi background where we had to write everything ourselves, you know, from user logins through to you know database connections right. and all the rest of it. It just gave us a massive heads up, and you know, and, and um, it I'll, let I'll, you get on with the interesting things. Absolutely, and just do the, the bits that were different on a particular, you know, customized for that project, so, and that was that was immediately obvious to us. So, how much in the history of your of your company have you um, built things like templates and features and 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 systems that are ready for your way of working? Well, uh, quite a bit. Yeah, we use we built our own um, installation profiles that we use for basic projects. Um, we don't do that so much now because we tend to use automation tools like Ansible and use the things like Vlad, which will script that for us in a slightly different way. But um, right, but you've still got your favourite recipes that you. Oh no, definitely. I mean, recipes are a big thing for us. Yeah. So, we so have, you get the you get the head up, the leg up, the the, the jump start, right, of a huge open source framework with a lot of tools, and then you've played with a bunch of it, so you know what you like. We do, yeah. And mean, then you know how to get to your 80, 90 percent solution. With your own, absolutely, we have a standard sort of set of best practices we use, which might be using display suite, or might be using context, or panels, or rules, depending on the, the requirements. And, we, and you know, we, we, we do a lot of blogging about those as, as recipes that people can use, and, mm. and we do a lot of work in commerce, and, and that, yeah, that's really useful in commerce um, where we have our I will, uh, best practices. I will definitely things. link to those. So, what version of Drupal did you start out with? Six. Six. Yeah. And compare working with Drupal 6 to what you do now. Well, 6, it was interesting. Like, 7 was was sort of on the cards. And so we, you know, we were in that early phase of looking at adopting a new version over the existing stable version. And, you know, that's where we find ourselves again with 8. But the, the thing that really uh, was different for us, I guess, is that, you know, being Delphi programmers, everything we did was very object-oriented. And... We used to do a lot of object-oriented work in C Sharp and so forth. So, you know, jumping head to eight, the object orientation is something that really appeals to us. Um, ah, and the sort of things in the the entity framework in Drupal seven was was something which we were eager to use over six. Sure, because um, it's where everything is in entity. Well, most things are in entity. Um, so, does Drupal eight under the hood for you look somehow like coming home? Oh, definitely, definitely. The sorts of principles which we had in uh, object orientation in. Um, you know, in Object Pascal, we suddenly start thinking it's exciting to be able to start using this again and sort of inheritance. And, yeah, know. PHP has really come a long way too. Yeah, definitely, yeah. But it's, 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 it's also how people want to use it as well. You know, yeah, so. the combination of a, of a faster, more powerful PHP with a Drupal community willing to take the risk of really going for it in terms of, of the, you know, standards of the day is... I think it's. I think it's going to put us in an incredible place. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, what are you most excited about in uh, uh, Drupal Eight? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, there's there's many things. I mean, I think um, I think the integration with Symfony is exciting. I think using you know using a standards and frameworks that have a wider usage outside of the Drupal 
environment, you know, and certainly as an employer, that's going to be something that's going to be attractive to people that we employ. You know that they've got a, a wide skill base that's got a greater applicability than the. Um, you know. So, do you think it'll be easier to find employees? I hope so. Uh, <laughs> the, I think it's um, more exciting for a, a young, a younger programmer. Yeah. That's that's one of my hopes too. I was talking with, I was talking with, a developer from the U.S. who pointed out that since Drupal eight um, is uh, more loosely coupled, uses the dependency injection patterns, um, you know, has the whole headless uh, concept of decoupling the front and the back ends. It allows developers to use really solid core technologies like Drupal, but then really experiment with alternate solutions, learn new, you know, keep themselves fresh and relevant over time. And um, because, you know, Drupal on its own is not the newest, most exciting technology, right? But uh, somehow opening opening ourselves up to, to like taking advantage of our core competencies feels like a, a very smart uh, tactical move to, to keep us relevant. Definitely. But I mean, from our perspective as well, was we, when we worked in C Sharp, there was a really lonely, lonely place to be. I mean, there were a lot of people working in C Sharp, but there wasn't anything like the community and the sharing of knowledge. And, you know, I think that, you know, if there are limitations in terms of it being the best or the most, you know, sexy in terms of a developer's perspective, I think the community more than I for that. Ah, so, so for you, the, um, the killer app of Drupal is the people. Definitely, and knowledge sharing, and, and you know the, the encouragement to share knowledge. I think that's that's key. You know, who hasn't you know solved problems more quickly by being able to find other people who've you know are willing to share their solutions. You know, rather yeah. than doing it in isolation in a lonely place to be. That's. I mean, yeah, and so compare working in perhaps in those terms, compare working in proprietary uh, solutions to to Drupal. I think. When people when people pay for expensive licenses, they tend to be very precious about their code. And we used to have, you know, massive um, issues of, um, you know, um, sorry, it's not roundabout <laughs> of intellectual property rights. You know, where um, there would be a, in a large part of contract negotiation would be around, you know, who owns what code and you know the licensing for built-in libraries that either we provide or. Know, some of the third party provides and where the boundaries are between the bespoke code that is the IP of the customer and, wow. oh, and, and know, which runtime it's in and oh and yeah and, and you know and we just that's just gone for us you know, we don't have to waste time and money and spend you know right. hours haggling over that we just say everything we do is open source and we will contribute back what we what we can and whatever we can and that you'll benefit from the open source and you will contribute to it as well from, from our customers point of view and our customers are because they're not paying for licenses, they don't feel that that's uh, giving away anything. You know, they, they, ah. they feel that it's something that they're benefiting from. So you don't have to do much work to convince them to give back the code that you did develop for their project? We, we don't have to do much work, but we also kind of reasonably, um, you know, um, that, that's our bottom line. We, 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 will, we will do that, and that's an understanding we have with our customers that's part of the contractual negotiation, uh -huh. that we will do that. So how does the community help your business and your clients? One of the things that I'm particularly responsible for is, is security, and we do a lot of hosting of customers' websites, and um, the you know, community of contrib contributions in terms of finding and solving security issues is a, is a massive one, which you don't get the benefit from in proprietary code. In proprietary code, if there are security issues, people tend to keep quiet about them. <laughs> <laughs> well, putting your head in the sand, <laughs> yeah, exactly. right? It's a time-honored tradition. It is. <laughs> And so that you know, that's one that really stands out. You know, the, the fact that the community you know, collaborates and, and, and communicates well on security issues. Um, but you know, you're constantly not reinventing the wheel. That's sounds strange to say, but that's to us is a you know massive advantage. We like to think that you know, I mean, we do write a lot of custom code, but we like to think that we only ever write custom code where it's absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. As we say so often, uh, something like Drupal lets us do the interesting stuff and solve the new problems. Mm. Okay, and yeah. and commoditize uh, all of the standard stuff. Or how you sanitize strings. I mean, how many people are writing the same functions to do maybe not as well, you know, as well as each other? Right, and uh, let's all own the same one. Maybe. In this day and age, I think anybody who goes at you know designing secure systems on their own 
from nothing and without telling anyone else about it is is just crazy. Yeah, they're on a, on a road to pain. <laughs> <laughs> Describe Drupal in one word. I fun. I think. I think it's fun. Fun. Yeah. Fun's I, a good I, one. I like. I like working with Drupal. I like it. But you know, it's fun. I, I enjoy my job. I enjoy. I enjoy going to work. <laughs> Isn't that an incredible privilege that uh, it is. that yeah. we can make a living doing something Definitely. that is? I'm worried I won't get away from it very long. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes a difference, you know. And I think that, you know, for, especially when you know, if you're employing people, if, you know, if that's that's a big thing to be able to offer people that the work that you do is fun. Also, if you're um, gen, if you yourself are genuinely enthusiastic, you can really instill that in your company culture in a very natural way, mm-hmm. right? In his keynote at the, the Drupal Camp Price, and Chick said something which I thought chimed with a lot of people, and that was that a, a day when he doesn't learn something is a day wasted. <laughs> yes. And I think, you know, we, I think in the Drupal community, that's kind of, we, we could all wear that t-shirt, I think. You know, we like to learn stuff. We like to have new challenges. And sometimes, you know, we probably make challenges out of things which should be more routine. <laughs> yeah, we're not frightened by a challenge. You know, we feel that we can achieve every, you know, we, we've not actually come across a challenge that we can't achieve using Drupal. Right. And you know that means that we're not just forcing Drupal on people because we want to work with Drupal. Is that you know if Drupal couldn't do it, we would do it another way. But we write APIs for integration with third-party tools for Drupal, and you know we've not found it wanting really. You know, so it's quite important for us that it is. A, you know, it's a we're always learning. And so um, that's exciting. My friend Cal Evans, who's quite well known over in the PHP world has uh, one of his little gems is something like uh, a developer who hasn't learned something new in the last three weeks is about as valuable as a paperweight. (laughs) What do you say to the developers or uh, people out there who think this move to Drupal 8 and object orientation and all it's just crazy and you know everything we've done so far is fine you know the people who I think if you said that in anything then you are just you know you're throwing the towel in because you know all technology is moving I mean I've been involved in probably web work for 15 well 17 18 years and not much has changed right? the technology is really much the same people ask for a web page and you give it back to them but the way that you do that and how efficiently you do that and how securely you do that has changed a lot and there's been a lot of technologies come and gone and right you know, and, and you, and the way that people use the web is changing every day. The way that people are, um, you know, investing in online, whether it's through them putting all their finances online or putting all their whole business processes online, we've got to keep up with that arms race of security as well. And, and if you if you say that I like the way that I do it today, then the way that you do it today will be not only irrelevant, but it's likely to be highly insecure and unperformant tomorrow. And, and um, the, the the web has now moved to the center of business digital is your business and it feels to me like most businesses now are, are organized around that rather than it being this one uh, you know way to publicize or one way to sell that it used to be so would you say so that made me want to ask how many times a year are you doing things differently or or, or you know how many projects in a row are done exactly the same before you're before you're adopting we're, we're, we never we never do something twice the same way we're always every time we do it although we benefit from the way that we've done it in the past we're always adding new um, you know a better way of doing it making it more efficient making it more performant or, right or adding a you know a, a subtler less you know complicated way of doing it or, um, I mean we I mean, I've, I've, I've just recently been involved in um, learning Ansible. We use Ansible. We've converted all of our infrastructure management to Ansible. And that's something you know I hadn't heard of a year ago. Uh, ah, you know, and now that's something I I gave a talk on today. <laughs> yes, he gave a great talk on that today, and I believe it will be posted online, and I will definitely link to that as well. So we you know we learn you know, whether it's learning SAS in, in terms of how you deal with CSS, or whether it's looking at different database backends, or whether it's learning things like Ansible. On, the tools that we use, the, you know, the advantage they're going to give us is that they're flexible enough to to also in, you know, allow us to interface and incorporate those sorts of technologies. And so the Drupal that was yesterday is going to have to change in order to be able to do that to, tomorrow. Right. So changes, changes are, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a necessary process, it's, it's a way of life, and you have to embrace it. It's, can you say that the change is the fundamental constant it is. of, of yeah, what we do? It is, yeah. So, but, 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 
you know, I also feel strongly that you know, it's it's change that is on top of something that hasn't changed much. You know, whether it's what users need, or whether it's you know um, standards of security, or whether it's the, the fundamental way that the internet works. There's a lot of things there that have made very constant. What's changed is how quickly we can do it, how efficiently we can do it, how securely we can do it, um, how and, and the ways that we interact with it, yeah, and how freely we can make it available to people. I mean, how long is it going to be until you know having a good broadband connection is a basic human right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, because. If you're saying to people that they can't vote unless they vote online, then your ability to provide an efficient online experience is becoming a human right, right? It's not just about going on and playing games or doing a bit of shopping. It's right. about your interaction with your local government, your doing all of your form filling, whether it's VAT or um, tax or mm. voting or booking a, a hospital appointment. You know, they're all things which you know, are going to re- almost require human rights to back up so that people aren't excluded from being online. Sure. You know, and I'm I'm really proud to be part of a technology and a technology community that is that is able to take abstract code and make the world a better place. Yeah, definitely. You know that that that's our superpower. It is yeah. right. Is the the ability to cha- make affect real world change. It is. Yeah. And make people and, and be able to teach people whether they're you know, the young people coming up through the system, whether they're old people that are subjected to technology which they might otherwise not have adopted, <laughs> is to make sure that it's easy to use and it's secure and available to them. Right. And there's no great licensing cost that prohibits them and they have to spend a lot of money to get the latest software to do it. Hey, so thank you so much for giving me a ride to my mum's house. That's a pleasure. <laughs> and, 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 you know, for, 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 for sharing this with me.